If you want to continue to follow our adventure, click subscribe. So you don't miss anything, click the bell notification. Looks like there's a monsoon over there. We're here at the Grand Canyon still, at the North Rim. We get storms that circle around us all the time, but nothing ever hits us so far. We've been here, well, a week today. This is the first time it was east of us. Usually it's this direction, south of us. Cloudy, that's about it. We're about four and a half miles, four miles as a crow flies, northeast of the North Rim. And so we're at an elevation of about 8,800 feet. There are a lot of YouTubers that tell you that when it's, it starts to get hot outside, instead of going north and south to get cool in the summer and warm in the winter, a lot of YouTubers will tell you to go up in elevation and down in elevation. So the hotter it gets, the higher you go. And the colder it gets, the lower you go. That's not the, 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 what we do. However, if we were going to come to the Grand Canyon this high up in ele elevation, July would have been, is the best time to do it. So that's what we did. And the temperature has been very nice. Today is the hottest day that we've experienced here at the North Rim at 85 degrees. Uh, it's already cooled off because you just saw that storm is approaching. Uh, so the temperature has been really nice. It got to 36 degrees one night. You know, it's actually kind of cool uh, for July. Well, there is one thing that YouTubers are not telling anybody, and, and this is a, a pretty serious problem. Since we've been here, Carolyn and I have not felt well. We know that it is harder to breathe. No matter what we do, it's been harder to breathe because of the oxygen level here this high. It's very low. And, and so we knew that this was a problem. We started out in New Mexico, and New Mexico was, uh, we, we were at 6,800 feet in elevation above sea level. And then we went to uh, just, oh, about 120 miles east of here. And there we were at 7,300 feet. And so we felt like we were trying to acclimate ourselves to the higher elevations very slowly. You know, as far as I understood, elevation that we would be able to acclimate slowly and get used to it. Now, the entire time, Carolyn has been complaining that she hasn't felt well. You know, I don't feel that well. I feel kind of like every, when I wake up in the morning, I have a hangover. So I keep thinking I'm dehydrated a little bit. That's what the hangover feel is, is, is dehydration. And I drink some water and uh, take a Tylenol and, I, I, you know, I get over it pretty quickly. Well, the other day, Carolyn and I went on a hike. And it was, it was a three, four mile hike. We weren't really pushing it or anything. But Carolyn really struggled. Well, I mean, I struggled too. And I knew we were getting dehydrated. Uh, you know, we took water, but we just could not replace the water fast enough. It wasn't hot. I would say it was 76, 77 degrees, but the, the, it's so dry, the moisture just gets sucked right out of you. The next day after the hike, Carolyn and I didn't do anything. As a matter of fact, we talked about going for a walk and we were just exhausted. We pretty much just laid around in the camper all day watching videos and taking naps. Well, then the day after that, Carolyn is still complaining that she's got a headache and she feels nauseous. This morning, I decided to look up elevation sickness. I don't know why it occurred to me or, or what it, why I thought this was a relevant thing. And this is what's so important to this video is, there are things that you don't know about this lifestyle that you just kind of guess at. And, and this is one of the things I just guessed at, elevation sickness. I don't know why I thought of it. Uh, you know, Carolyn's sick and we're at high elevation, so I just typed it in. Uh, it's a pretty serious thing. Sure enough, people in Colorado and here in Arizona and different elevations get pretty sick coming up here, and it takes a few days to acclimate. And there's different stages to this. It's, uh, uh, the first stage is uh, it's called acute elevation sickness. And so you get dizziness, De uh, dehydration, nausea, headaches. And this is the symptoms that Carolyn is really experiencing. And another symptom is you don't sleep well. Well, I, don't, I haven't even been sleeping well. So, I mean, and I actually contributed this to the elevations that I thought, well, maybe I'm not sleeping well because of the elevations. Now, the second uh, stage of this is, is your lungs will start filling up with fluid. And so I was really concerned that she was going to, to start getting worse. And then finally, the third stage is uh, your brain starts to swell. Well, she got any worse today. I, I was going to take her down. Well, this morning she woke up and she felt better. 
The thing is, is I'm feeling better too. Now, remember, we've been here a week and it took us a week to start feeling better. There's a few things that you got to be aware of if you're going to come up to these high elevations. One, uh, the web page says you should start feeling better within two or three days of being up in the elevations. Now, you don't necessarily start feeling the symptoms right away. It may take a day or two. And then they say it takes you a day or two to get over the symptoms. Well, like I said, it's taken us a week and we're starting to get to a point where we can feel pretty good. We went for our little walk today. Both of us felt real good. When you get up here, water is very limited. So we got to drive 120 miles to go get water. Well, when you get up here, so you're really kind of trying to conserve water. Well, here's the thing is, I guess from a subconscious level, Carolyn was not drinking as much water as she should have. But the thing is, is if you don't drink enough water out here, uh, up in these higher elevations, you're going to dehydrate even faster. You're supposed to actually double the amount of water that you drink at lower elevations up here. Because what happens is, is your breath rate is accelerated. And so every time you exhale, you release moisture. Well, now you're up here, you're breathing twice as fast, and you know it takes more uh, water away from you. Your body has to work harder at food digestion up here, so it's using more water and more energy to digest food. Hoping that you know we've kind of finally got over the over it. Now that we're up here, your red blood cells will actually start to increase, and so red blood cells will carry more oxygen. So now you have more red blood cells. You're carrying more oxygen. You're going to feel stronger. Now, what I did read, and I found this very interesting, when we go down in elevation, the red blood cells won't die off immediately uh, it takes about 120 days for those red blood cells to die off so we're going to feel pretty good for you know several months after we get out, of, out down in the lower elevations older people need to be more aware of it because now their heart is working harder and their lungs are working harder so it may actually increase your risk for heart attack well if you get sick and you're high up in elevation uh, and it keeps getting worse and worse you need to go down in elevation thanks for watching Click like if you like the video and happy travels.